I wish I had everything memorized. My memory is not as good as some people in the world. So. I quickly want to give a shout out to The Zone 2 in Peoria, Illinois. When I messaged them about interviewing Jason, they were so kind to me. I came in that morning to set up and they had a breakfast pizza and they were offering if I wanted some. They asked if I needed a chair to sit down while I waited. It was really a blast. Uh, some of the workers and one of the owners were all buying magic packs and opening them at the same time and doing kind of little competitions. It was really fun. I highly encourage you uh, to check them out if you just like good people who are passionate about this community it's they're really awesome thank you guys so much for letting me do this it's a dream come true i'm casey and this channel is all about power rangers i do a lot of fan theories i try to do lots of other videos this is my very first interview i've ever gotten to do with an actor from power rangers so i'm super excited to show it to you so if you enjoy this please consider subscribing comment below i love talking to people about power rangers so with no further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jason Font. Filming 12, 12 hour days, six days a week. Yeah. And then also I know the writer's strike you guys were trying to get before that. Yep. And then the season's airing halfway through you guys filming and everything. I'm sure it just is really, it's a blur to understand what the storyline is and what everything's going on. So how has Legend of the White Dragon been different for you being able to kind of beat it? Not completely at the inception, but really towards the beginning of it. Well, I mean, with Legend of the White Dragon, when you're doing a film like that, you know, it's still possible to have creative changes during the filming. As you start to film and you start the characters start to develop, it's possible to like take different turns as we go. That film was funded by the fans for the fans, so we had complete control over what we wanted to do. So we could maneuver around as we wanted to do different things with characters. Power Rangers, the TV show, was like a well-oiled machine that had been going for nine years by the time I got there. So they knew, they just knew how to block and tackle, block and tackle, which was pretty cool. A lot more freedoms to improv, a lot more flexibility to Dragon versus Power Rangers. But yeah, it was a blur. I mean. We got on, we were filming like crazy because of the upcoming strike, and then it was like, the first episode, I believe, aired three months after we started filming. So it's like I'd been the Red Ranger for three months, nobody in the world knew it, because it aired in like February, so it was like when it finally came out, I mean, they were already looking to replace me four months after that, <laughs> right, which is right. crazy, right? So, yeah, it was a blur. I know you played Division One baseball mm -hmm. at North Carolina Asheville. And then going from that a Division One school, playing for Boise County Dragons, yes. what was what was the kind of was there a culture shock or a change from Division One to that? Because it was their first season too. Yes. Oh, so. you did your research, man. I love it. When you play pro ball, you know we were selling out. I want to say four or five thousand fans a night. The, the fan base was a lot larger on the pro side. So college was college. Really? You know, okay. it, it, you know, college baseball doesn't have, I mean, certain schools do, but ours wasn't thousands of people there. When I went to Hunterburg, Indiana, we were the only attraction in town. Right. Right. So everybody in town would go to the game on, on the nights, packed stadiums. So that was a shock to me, even though I was in a completely different rural area. Right. The attention we got, it, it, it was kind of cool because it, it almost got me conditioned for the life I eventually was going to lead like now. Because we would go into restaurants, they knew we were the players. We'd sign right. autographs, you know. Yeah. So it was it was pretty cool to get a feel for that, right? And then, and of course, Hollywood. Then I moved out there soon after. A league of their own was the stadium you guys yes. were at, right? Yes. So it's when you do something that long, it burns you out after yeah. a while. Doing acting was heavily on your mind. Was the stadium or any of that sort of like an encouragement to go into acting, or no, no? no. <laughs> I wanted to be an actor from the moment I saw Risky Business. Right, so I, 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 was, I was very sick, I had the flu. Not very sick, but like everyone gets the flu. My parents rented, you know, back when we had Blockbuster, they both worked, so they rented me movies. I watched Risky Business, and like for that two hours of that movie, like I completely forgot I was sick. It totally took me away, and I thought, man, someday this is what I want to do. But I'd already played baseball at a high level, you know, I was MVP of every team I was on, playing as a varsity as a sophomore, so I'm like, I need to see this to its end. Right, because I wanted to get a scholarship, which I ended up getting. 
But I was like, once I'm done playing ball, whenever they kick me out, I'm moving to Hollywood. So after I was done playing ball, yeah, packed up my bags and headed out. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. I know you're from Illinois. You're a Bears fan. Yes. Um, but I know you and your friends go to stadiums all over. Right. And you go in full support of those teams yes. when you're there. In kind of a culture where you're kind of encouraged to hate every team but your own. Right. Why do you guys find that so beneficial to have that experience? So I grew up in northern Illinois, which is about a half Green Bay Packer, half Chicago Bear fan. Right. Race. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of lines there at that, that Wisconsin border. As a result of that, half of my best friends are Packer fans. Half us are Bear fans. So we said, look, every year we're going to put down our swords. We're going to go to a different stadium. When we go there, we're going to be a saint for a day, and that's okay. We're going to be a Buccaneer fan for a day. You know? So that was kind of our joke, okay. is we would go to a different stadium. We would totally gear up for that team for a day. Mm -hmm. I mean, face paint, we do the whole thing up. And then we just figured that would be a good way to see different stadiums and, and make it fun. We all root for the same team for once. These are childhood friends of mine. Right. Yeah. So this year... We actually go to a game. The Rams play the Packers. Yeah. So we're, we got to go see why Aaron Rodgers is there. So we're gonna, I'll, be, I'll be full L.A. Rams. Right, yeah. But, but this is going to be different. We want to go to Lambeau before, Aaron's, before Aaron leaves. That's kind of the goal. So December 19th, yeah. Lambeau Field. When the Rams were talking about moving to L.A., I saw that you were like, yes, let's yes. do it. Cause, yes. Uh, but, yeah, they're in St. Louis, so we're, they're, a lot of people around here were – kind of sad yeah that they i'm sure move. i'm sure so i know you're also an avid golfer learning oh really okay yeah learning. i'm only like three years in okay. but i love it of course you have lots of sport experience mm -hmm. at what point in the celebrity golf off against steven schuyler did you know like i've i'm winning <laughs> this for sure gosh i don't know um he doesn't golf as much as i do now so I had a feeling we were going to win that. And that was pretty cool because we helped out Operation yeah. Freedom Pause. Yeah. I only could catch really one clip of it, but you were giving them some advice on which like, driver <laughs> yes. to use and stuff. And I was yes. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've eaten things from like giant crabs to dining next to live alligators. Oh, yes. What is the like top Mount Everest dining experience you've ever had, if there is one? Gosh, I tell you what. We went to a steakhouse in Tampa, Tampa yeah. last week called Burn Steakhouse. That was incredible it's like a, it's got the largest wine collection in the world private wine collection top five steakhouse in the country that was really cool but i mean there's been so many places um so many places but the two you mentioned are pretty cool i mean going to alaska was was neat yeah we saw a moose out there we we had drinks in a it was like an ice castle oh, wow. um and it was completely made of ice they it was a hotel they had beds in there that was made of ice so i think that was pretty cool but i I'd have to take a little more time to really think about okay. that. Yeah. yeah. Good question, though. Oh, thanks. With Netflix and all the different stuff, that, or all the streaming services, content can be a little more adult or more accepting. And I know that you made produced a movie called Pact yes. uh, back around 2003. Do you think that would have been more kind of, not, not that it wasn't accepted, but more kind of uh, mainstream now, like people would maybe accept that more currently? Back then, filming your own project was very expensive. I mean, now you can do so much from your phones and, and, and everything. Even a little project like that still, I want to say it costs like 40 grand. It's a lot of money. And you didn't have the same medium to get it out there. We wanted to make a film that was unique. It was different. It made you think a bit. I mean, there was nothing rainbows and lollipops about that movie. Right. My buddy who wrote it, you know, his girlfriend at the time was a dancer in Vegas. And he, he would always say, like, you know, she's getting home at late at night. You know, what if somebody followed her home what if somebody did this in his mind would go i would want to revenge that i would go so mad and so he thought let's create a film where this happens to somebody and these guys get this pack mentality they go to exact revenge and just they act too quick and then they don't realize what they did so we thought this would be something very different it never took off like we thought it would probably now yeah i think it'd be a different a different ball game yeah you know so i know you're father of two girls yes uh, so I want to ask you, I, I have a son who's two and a half, okay. just now getting super into Power Rangers, but I have a daughter who's uh, six months. I grew up in a family of all boys. Okay. So do you have any advice for fathers for daughters? Hold on to your hats when they get to be 13. Okay. Yeah. Hold on to your hats because when I had girls, I thought I'm going to be the cool dad. They're going to like me. Their friends are going to think I'm cool. And all that happened. But... I'm still dad. Right. I'm still the guy. They're like, hey, you know, drop me off down the road. And even though their friends are like, dad, your dad's the Red Ranger. That's so cool. They're all excited. But still your dad. So yeah. 
At 13, they change a bit, so you just got to hold on to your hats, be there yeah. for them, and, and hopefully they come back around in a few years. Right. August 28th, Power Rangers Day, they put up a poll on the official Power Ranger Facebook page of what's the best season, and Time Force came out on top. Yep. And I mean, you do conventions all over the place. Have you really had any definitive, just between all the fans you've talked to, anything that sticks out as like, this is really the reason why Time Force is so beloved on top of everything else? When they filmed the original series, the auditions were, you have 30 seconds, let me see you kick and flip and punch. That was the auditions. By the time they got the Power Rangers, the show went union, and they had the ability and the want to get actors. So our audition was very different. It was a six page audition with a, a scene with your father that had some emotion involved, some anger involved. It was a regular audition like you do for a movie or a soap opera or anything else. Very different. When they were gonna bring actors in, they brought in you know, Vernon Wells, who had been done a lot of mainstream movies. You know, Eddie Albert Jr., you know, he had done a lot of things as well. And they brought in a lot of veteran Hollywood actors to help us learn as we go. Because they brought in actors, I think they really wanted to push character development. They really wanted to push these scenes. I mean, if you watch the arc between all these characters, between Wes and Eric, that's a big arc right there. Two kids from different sides of the tracks that learn to grow together for a common cause. You know, Alex, Wes, and Jen, that whole story of him dying but not being able to really say anything because of the time grid watching his fiance fall in love with someone else, her having to leave. There's a lot of really, you know, Frax's involvement in, you know, teaching Nadira to not hate people that don't look like us. There's a lot of deep stories in there. So I think people have grown. They now rewatch the show and they go like, oh my God, there's a lot of adult themes in this thing. And I think that's what kind of pushes over. Thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate you doing it. So yep. thanks a lot. Great job, buddy. Oh, thank you. Jason is currently working on an animated series, which is all about the two fairies daughter. It's really, uh, I saw the teaser. It's really cool. I have the link below. You can go and check it out. How is time force SPD RPM and operation overdrive all connected? Well, I got a really great fan theory video that I want you to check out. So check it out after this. If you haven't seen already, thank you guys so much. Have a great one. Love you. Yeah, tag you. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. You did your research for sure.